Hello everyone, and welcome to my We will be covering the following a very brief introduction to Kismet, understanding Kismet. What I mean by that is the type of data it returns to us. Then we're going to move into the installation and setup and take a look at the dashboard. Now, when we move into the installation and setup, I'm actually going to be using a different uh, utility to capture my terminal because I will be on a Linux Mint machine. So that view is a different. Now, we get into the execution of Kismet and actually capturing the packet. Again, you is to swap between you see now and my Linux machine. Don't worry, I'll try to make this as seamless as possible. Now, in regards to Kismet, a brief introduction. I want to take a look at a couple of things with the framework. Versatility, how it silently listens, the bytes tools it comes with, and ultimately the overall value Kismet offers. When we think of versatility, the number one thing that I listed was network discovery. This is what we're using Kismet in Kismet totally excel. Not only Wi-Fi network, but also Bluetooth devices that are Zigbee type networks. Now, if you don't know what a Zigbee network is, don't fret. A Zigbee network is a type of wireless network specifically designed for low power, low data rates, and short range communication. It's commonly used in applications that require wireless connectivity between devices with minimal power exchange. Zigbee networks are part of typically part of the broader category of wireless area networks. Now again these are low power, short range, they often use a mesh topology, low data rate, and we see these in standardized um, appliances across a multitude of networks. Now, in regards to Kismet's versatility, geolocation is also very important. One thing that we're going to appreciate once we get to the dashboard is Kismet's ability to discover these wireless networks and devices and map the physical location of these access points. Now, may be thinking, well, you're in a very short range, you already sort of know where you're at. That's true. However, once we get into the expanse of Kism, that will make for simplified extremely Now, we're not going to read all of this here. However, all of these slides will be made available to you reference. Kismet also is a silent listener because of its passive monitoring ability. Kismet operates in passive mode, which means again it's silently listening to wireless traffic without participating in the network communication. What we mean by participating in network communication, we mean by actually gaining onto the network itself utilizing the bandwidth of that network. Now, with its ability to silently listen, this allows for monitors, security auditors to capture data out disrupting the day-to-day -day business and the organization. Trust me, that's going to be the first question. It should be a question is asked to you as a penetration tester or security. Is anything that you're going 
to do today, so we can go to however long it take you to do the audit, is going to disrupt day-to-day -day business activity. This is extremely important, especially for the finance sector. Kismet also comes with a variety of the most important is Kismet Server. Now this is the core of Kismet, as it states. This is what handles the packet capture and manage. Now remember what I said about the, G the GPS coordinates. Kismet has drones. Drones are remote sensors that can be placed in different locations to extend that location capability. You can imagine if you had a bag full of drones, you could do Say a small complex, maybe a small apartment, flat complex, apartment, whatever, office complex, that would allow you to extend, and you would really see where all of these devices are able to capture are located geographically. Hugging and alerting; these are the two criteria that Kismet excels at. You can customize Kismet to. Uh, report certain intrusion detection or report things to you based on or as Kismet refers to it, customizable rights. Now the overall value of Kismet I tried to sum it up uh, here. Actually importantly Kate tried to sum it up. However, it's very, very tough. Security audits, yes. Network troubleshooting, absolutely. I think one of the more important things is site surveys and compliance and regular testing. Because there are new compliance and regulations coming, uh, coming into the mainstream organization, very important to stay on Kismet is used for these compliance testing to ensure that the wireless network adhere to a certain level of security and regular standards, as well as research and development. Now, this is what we in the lab as Kismet is research and development, or at least that's my job. Is we use Kismet to study these wireless protocols, test methodology, technologies. Uh, we are often conducting great experiments with different wireless applications, different form factors. And again, if you'd like any information about some of our testing we do in the lab, please email Kate directly. Everything is her. Um, but again, I'm sure that she has no problem with checking. So that we can stay on track within a month, we're going to take a look at understanding Kismet. What do I mean? Well, we need to understand the data structure. We also need to have a quick conversation about open source. And again, uh, it's listed uh, as approachable. I think it's done this way because. Kismet is very approachable. And now, let's take a look at the data. The data that you're going to see from Kismet, and again, this is only a small chunk, but you're going to get the SSID and the BSSID. The SSID is typically your network name, and the BSSID is your MAC address. That MAC address. You're also going to get the channel and frequency of each client, each device connected to a wire. Kismet, great job, we give you the signal strength. Now, there are other tools that will give you signal strength. However, I do like the way you can get different device information, get packet data, GPS data. And additional information which covers configuration and behavior. For an example, 
Now, as promised, I have a snapshot of the dashboard for you. Now, with the dashboard, with Kismet's dashboard, this is the dashboard. Now, as you can see right here, this is When you first start Kismet up, and this will make more sense to you, when we install it and start it for the first time, it's going to be locally hosted. This is a nice little, nice browser. Here are the types of devices right here. It says Wi-Fi access point, Wi-Fi client, Wi-Fi device. It gives you the cryptographic crypto. For short, it's how is it WPA tips, WPA Here's the signal strength of device. Now, for the sake of this slide, I have these sibling. As you can see, the signal strength is going to reach. It will also list the channels. Channel 11 is very common. Channel 3 fits within that range as well. Now, with a 5 gigahertz network, channel range is quite different. You see that once we start Kismet up, do this real time so that you can see real time the data and how it changes. Now, this snapshot is from an old uh, Kismet capture. Amount of data, some packets here. Now, once we actually get into the dashboard ourselves, all of these will be little nuggets of truth for us. And I'll show you what that means. We can actually expand on that. And here's this ID, client, to access. Now, this is just a general of what the dashboard looks like. It really hasn't changed. That may look different on here. But it's going to be arranged in a very similar fashion as the I see you in the next video. Or in the next video, what to do is again, I'm going to be on my Linux Mint machine and we're going to satisfy the dependent. We are going to install Kismet. Then we are going to run Kismet first time. Now, just a bit of think. We, I do not currently. Have Kismet on this particular machine, particular machine that I'm the Linux machine that I'm going to show you. Uh, Kate has asked me not to have it reinstalled because if there are any errors, she wanted me to solve the errors at the time. You get the same errors. It is more of a real life picture of installing Kismet. So I hope to see you in the next.